Greetings, everybody. How you doing? It's your boy, Brian Polito, and welcome to Beer with Brian, the March edition. Beer with Brian is a program of the Coffin Comics Sworn Club, and the Sworn Club is something you should definitely join if you haven't. You might ask yourself, why the heck should I join the Sworn Club? Well, first of all, you got a good, cool membership packet to begin with, filled with a lot of goodies. Excuse me. Um, then you get news about everything Coffin Comics 24 hours in advance of everybody else. Additionally, you get a one hour advantage over everybody at the Coffin Comics store. Excuse me, I'm just burping up the storm, sorry. Whoop. Uh, and the great majority of our promotions. So without further ado, this is an informal conversation between us in which I ruminate on some recent pop culture stuff. And this is also a chance to, you know, talk back and forth on stuff. I can't believe at like, this date, it's literally a month since Sworn Fest, and I'm still basking in the glow, feeling wonderful about it, missing it. It kind of got like uh, withdrawals. Um, if you didn't go, if you were there, you know, and if you didn't, man, make plans next time. So yeah, uh, I'll give you like a pop culture observation, and then we could get into some Q&A. And I guess, what is my pop culture? I... Uh, yeah, I haven't seen anything. It's interesting. I haven't seen anything that really stuck with me recently. I am watching Walking Dead, Those Who Live. And, you know, so far, eh, I, I just don't like Rick, you know, not being Rick. But I don't want to do spoilers. There's a couple more episodes to come. I did see kind of a radical film on Netflix. It was called Unthinkable, starring Samuel Jackson. And the premise was very intense. It was, um, there was a man who set up bombs in three major cities in the United States that had nuclear material and threatened to blow them up. So they bring in Samuel Jackson, who's like a, like the, no known evidence of this guy's existence, but he is a torturer. He tortures people for information, you know, under like working with the US government. And then his contrasting character is uh, Carrie Ann Moss, the woman who played Trinity in uh, the Matrix series. And she's sort of like the counterpoint. And this is the story how in a very short period of time they try to extract the information out of them. And it was brutal, man. I mean, it was horrible. So in the end, I don't really know what I got out of it. And I don't want to mess up the ending for you. But like, I don't know if I was entertained or I endured it. Whatever. So see it at your own risk. But feel free to ask a question. Miguel is saying unthinkable was so good on a character level. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, Samuel Jackson went there. And again, I don't want to mess it up for people. I mean, it was, it went there. <laughs> so, does anybody have any questions they would like to ask on Be With Brian? And Miguel, uh, nice to hear from you. Uh, yeah, let's, let's scroll back to the top here. Um, a couple comments as well. Uh, let's see. Oh, Second Street Marvel is asking, is it time for another Sworn Fest yet? It's feel, I'm feeling it. Are you feeling it? You know, we're still kind of, we did, um, we did Sworn Fest. We loved it. And then internally as a company, we had a recap. We review what worked, you know, what did we do well, what didn't work as uh, well, and what would we do in the future? So, you know, we'll definitely take suggestions if you want. Uh, so go to inquiries at coffincomics.com. If we are to do a Sworn Fest 2026, uh, it would be 26. We do them every other year. So we have not decided actually. So we'll see. Uh, you know, if we hear from you guys and gals out there, you want to do it again and, you know, get together and just sort of, you know, be together and, you know, let us know. Kaylee is saying it's so cool to see HQ and knowing I've actually walked those grounds. You have walked those grounds. Like right now, as you and I speak, we're in the newly created uh, lounge, which is a beautiful designed by Francisca Polito. We brought in so many of our items from our previous building, uh, but this one is, as you can see, is a complete expression of sort of like, you know, a gothy conference room. We do, we call it the conference room lounge. So it's kind of got a gothy, cool vibe and some of the most recent art is up there. It's amazing. It's a little unclear, but Victor wants to know, uh, when are you releasing the digital editions of the 2023 comics? That's for friends, maybe a Kickstarter? So we do tend to, if let me see if I'm answering your question. When we do a Kickstarter, that's the first run of any given story. And we do tend to release the digital version of that story about midway or three quarters of the way through the delivery of a Kickstarter. So whether we've announced it or not, 
Uh, right now, as we sit, it's Thursday. Tomorrow, we're actually releasing Hell Witch Bitchcraft. So stay tuned. We're sending it out to all backers. Or oh, maybe it also means uh, putting them on the store, Coffin Comic Shop. Oh, that's a good question. I don't know how current we are. Um, we could look into that and uh, get some of the previous, everything that's published to date, get that up and running. And uh, I guess you already answered this. Miguel is asking when, when's the next Scorn Fest, if it would be happening? I'd say uh, February of 2026, if we uh, pull the trigger. And, uh, oh, Wizard Sleeves wants to know, is that a Guinness? I must admit to you that I'm not drinking a Guinness but I am a scandal. It's before five o'clock and I'm having a diet soda. <laughs> yeah, and that's something I just don't do unless it's the weekend. So uh, I'm definitely treating myself today. I'm wild. Okay, Dan has a... Uh... I'll probably put some, like if it's five o'clock, I'll then put some Jameson in there. Dan wants to know when writing, do you ever run into any narrative problems? Like you want a story to reach a certain conclusion, but continuity or story gets in the way. If so, how do you overcome these writing challenges? Well, uh, let me see here. I'm trying to think of a specific. I kind of don't. Um, however, I mean, every story is challenging. And uh, it's always great to have a co-writer like Mike McLean, because if I ever get stopped for whatever reason, I literally just bat it over to Mike. Or, you know, we get in communication and say, help each other kind of get out of a narrative problem, so to speak. But he and I actually developed a system that we work on together. We've written 40 stories together at this point. And we actually heavily outline before we write the entire story. And generally, we know the high points of what we're trying to hit. That gives us some flexibility then of how to get to the different spots. So I guess what you're describing, I haven't experienced in a while. Um, but, but there's always a challenge into a story. And I, I won't, we won't quite relate right to them as a problem. But I would say in comics, sometimes space is a problem. So let's say we're confined to 48 pages for a story and we want certain story beats to happen. Sometimes there's that, right? Where it's like, man, this, I was writing Mike Morg and originally there was a scene and when I wrote it kind of freehand, it was three pages. But when I really had to have it conform to a 48 page story, I really only had a page and a half for this. So I had to do some heavy self-editing because I just didn't have the luxury of the scene running three pages. I had to cut it. And you know what? It's not that hard when you get super ruthless. You start asking yourself, okay, what is the essence of this scene and how could I get move it, you know, just by it being, you know, just uh, cut down to, to its bare basics. It tends to work out. Let's see, Eric says, uh, hey, Brian, I don't have a question, but more I just want to say that it was a privilege to meet you and the entire crew at Swordfest. What a crazy weekend, and I can't wait to see you all again. I gotta tell you, Eric Hart, when I get to meet people in person, Haley Anderson, Eric Hart, Miguel Apodaca, in my life, you guys are the superstars. So really, it's just over, overwhelming in such a beautiful way to meet people in person. At Swordfest, I never got a chance to meet, just see them all like in action, like seeing you in action, it was, Super gratifying, dude, because it's like, you know, like we are one. It's phenomenal. It's just the best. Solomon has a question about, uh, he's asking, hey, Brian, how did Chaos Comics begin? Well, Chaos Comics, I actually had my first story, Evil Ernie, published by a different publisher. That was Malibu Graphics. And then it, uh, I think Ernie was going to be published again, but in a different imprint at that company. And we had negotiated a sequel when that was going to be Evil Ernie, The Resurrection. And we had agreed in principle verbally on what we were going to do on a Friday. And like the following Monday, they called up and said, yeah, we're not going to publish this stuff. Now, it's really lost to time why that happened. Um, I actually am on very good talking terms with those guys. But at the time, you know, it was intense. It was like, holy mackerel, now we have nowhere to go. And, you know, I had done enough feeling out of other publishers that I kind of knew it was like, no one really gets the stuff that I do. So I'm going to have to just do it myself. That's really what it came down to. And I really had no discernible skill for this. I knew nothing about comic publishing, but I realized that if I wanted to tell my stories on my own terms, I had to form a comic book publishing company. And thanks to the faith of 
uh, Francisca Polito, Stephen Hughes, and a handful of others. Um, everyone like threw in and said, okay, I'm, I'm going to stake you. I believe in you. And I think it was, I could be wrong. It was June, was it June 92, 93? We launched Evil Ernie, the, one, uh, the resurrection number one. Now I felt, I didn't know how people are going to respond to it. I just didn't. And you know, happily people really loved it and thank God because you know, the rest is history. So it was, it was born out of need more than anything. And I think that's why you see me continue to publish on my own to this day, because I don't know that other people exactly get it. So, you know, we just, we go it alone. Coffin Comics is lone wolf style. David wants to know, how's the video game coming along? David, the video game is coming along smashingly. If you could believe it, in five weeks or less, we're launching the campaign. The great news is the team at Art of Play are going to be showing you so much material from the very beginnings. But here's some of the good news. The story generally is broken out. We are going to launch a Kickstarter, use that funding to fund this game, which is, this is going to be an expensive project. And from the time we complete the campaign, it will take two years, two years to, to make the game and to send the game out. So it's going to be a process. We're all going to go through it together. The Art of Play team are really transparent. So every week there's going to be updates, there's going to be progress shots, and you're going to get a sense of what's upcoming. But we are getting ready to launch the campaign. We are their partners in, in that element of that project. But so far it's just been wonderful working with these guys. Really simpatico, you know, meeting Ash Nichols. And, you know, big up to Anthony Spey. So Anthony Spey, our co uh, contributing cover artist, was working with Art of Play on The Phantom, and he is the person who suggested that our two companies come together to make the game. So without Anthony Spey, this game would never come to be. A comment from uh, Rock Bottom saying, says uh, they dig the lamps. Yeah, check out those lamps, man. The lamps are, uh, yeah. This is from a company in the UK called The Blackened Teeth. Well, anyone wants to know, have you ever had a peanut butter stout? I can't say that I've had a peanut butter stout. But let me let you know something about me. I am probably, I am just not a stout person. I'm a pale ale person. And I know you stout folks kind of look down on pale ales. But understand, I live in the American Southwest. And, you know, look at my body type. I am like a, a lizard who lives in the desert. So I, I do tend to like kind of the thinner tasting beers generally. Like my go-to is like Corona, has been for God knows how many decades. Just love it. Uh, St. Mark is asking, will, there ever, will we ever see a chromium cover again? So chromium covers were a very specific technology owned by a company called Chromium Graphics. I don't know what they call themselves any longer. And the original use of that technology was the very detailed signage you would see in bars and nightclubs throughout the country. You know, those beautiful Budweiser lamps, they would provide that kind of uh, the artwork. So it was a very interesting technology. It was also a very expensive technology. And the minimums to produce that were very high. So I actually am not in touch with those manufacturers. I don't know if they're in business or they're not. But I think the likelihood of that actual technology being used at the moment, to my knowledge, is unlikely. David also wants to know, how is the Chaotica action figure coming along? And what character is going to be up after her? Oh, well, um, so um, that trio of figures are very, very close to being on the water, if I understand correctly. And we have agreed upon the next trio of characters. Uh, it's very early in that process. Uh, so I, I don't know that I'm at liberty to to discuss, but I'm very happy that executive replicas and loose collectors find bringing our characters to life uh, uh, beneficiary to them as a company and creatively satisfying. So we are just totally indebted to them that they're still along for the ride and in loving it as much as we are. Uh, substitute Archangel wants to know any chance of a plushy coffin lady. Well, that is a very interesting question. So I'd like to hear more of your feedback on that. You know, should we do something like that? I will let you know that we have a new division of Coffin Comics that's in its infancy. And we're calling that 
coffin curiosities. And this will largely be low print run manufactured goods that are very, very damn cool, including things like full color shot glasses, gigantic holofoil, die cut stickers, um, Zippos, and I would like to do flushy, plushies, but I need to hear back from you guys and gals if it's valid. The thing about plushies is the, the minimums, the minimum amount you could make, it's kind of high. So we have to find a happy medium. Sora Sung has uh, designed both a La Muerta and Lady Death plushie. She has done this in the past, and I would love to bring those to life, but we really need to hear if it's the sort of thing you'd like to have. Matt is asking, what comics have you been reading lately? So the comics that I've been reading lately that I've enjoyed is uh, Avengers Twilight. So Avengers Twilight is a, a kind of a future what if he kind of story that takes place after an event called H-Day. And this is a Marvel comic. So on H-Day, something very, very bad happened. And it's in effect, uh, most known superheroes were retired, imprisoned, or taken out of action because of something that happened. The present is sometime after that, and it's told from the point of view of Steve Rogers' Captain America, where he kind of realizes, with the help of Luke Cage, that they're all kind of being duped in that H day and the way the world is working out is all, it's, it's all like a giant villains enterprise. So all these events just start to awaken and get called into action. So I've read the first three issues. It's dynamite. It's very intense, but I would say it's like an, it's like a what if he kind of storyline in the vein. The quality is in the vein of something like Marvel's or uh, ruins and it's quite intense. It's, it's quite serious. So I've enjoyed that. I've been reading, let me think here. I've been reading a lot because I just finished a, a pretty cool zombie book called uh, This is the Way the World Ends. And it's written by an author I didn't even know named Kevin Taylor. And it's about like 350 pages, so kind of short. And it's very similar in its premise to World War Z, where it's a journalist going back and interviewing a series of people who played pivotal or non-pivotal roles during the beginning, middle, and end of a global zombie outbreak. And I got to tell you, I really liked it. So I really like that guy's writing. So I just picked up and started reading a thing called Last Man Standing, a zombie apocalypse thriller. So I got like the 700 pager and uh, I liked it. So those are the two things reading wise that I've been enjoying. Let's see if there's anything else that I've been ripping through. I have a pile, like all of us, right? I have a pile, but those are the standouts. Uh, Victor has a question. He's saying, uh, since we have the uh, multiverse or infinityverse, as we call it, do yeah. you think you'll introduce other variants of Lady Death, like medieval Captain Death, stuff like that? I, I think the future is unwritten. I would love to. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's funny you ask this because all these stories and possible stories and settings, they're, they're spinning around in my mind and they're very expansive. And then there's only so many hours in the day and so many items that we publish in a given year. So then it kind of has to focus down. But I do think that the existence of the infinity verse in the Coffin Comics universe does imply that things like medieval Lady Death exists. And if you read Sacrificial Annihilation, you could actually, you do see her in there. So you saw her and Wolfram von Bach, her mentor, were in that book ever so slightly. So what I guess I am saying is like, you know, a lot of that stuff is real. You know, whether we're able to get to all of it, I don't know. But let me ask you a question back. Would you like to see different versions? Um, I don't want to overdo the infinity verse thing. I think we all got you know, the comic book universe has kind of got caught up in the trend, but it is kind of fun, you know? So to introduce Empress Death and tell her story was really, really fun because it showed Lady Death, our Lady Death, had she made different choices, what road she could go down. Um, I, I must admit to you that I don't feel like we're done with Empress Death. I thought she's such a great character. So 
I don't think that we're done with her. I think that she will want to be heard sooner rather than later. Caitlin wants to know, any other crossovers in the works now that we have Lady Dad versus Zombie Trap? Well, I mean, the first thing we're focusing in on, I mean, anything's possible. Um, but we are focusing in this year's storyline, Helageddon, on some serious, serious conflicting stories. So upcoming, we have La Muerta, Lady Death, Inferno. And this is part of our overriding storyline, Helageddon. And that story might as well be, you know, it's a versus story for sure. Like, uh, La Muerta gets it in her mind that wherever Lady Death shows up, conflict follows. And if she could eliminate Lady Death, that she is going to save the world a lot of problems. And I got to tell you, we just finished, you know, we're coloring and dialoguing that particular book and the fight between those two, it's real. And if you think that La Muerta couldn't give Lady Death a run for her money, please read our story. Cause even like we wrote it and then I see the pages and I'm like, okay, you know, I'm pretty surprised. I'm pretty surprised at where that story leaves off. So we are spending the year having our own characters crossover. So you're going to see, in Lady Death 20, uh, the character Madame Midnight play an important role. And I don't want to give it away, but you're going to just see a lot of our characters in direct conflict, sometimes crossing over and teaming up. Um, sometimes people who fought before now have to team up, and people who are like, you know, they, they love each other, now they hate each other. There's a lot of that going on this year in our stories. Iris wants to know, how do you go about getting different cover artists? Well, how I go about... Uh, getting different cover artists is a combination of factors. Frequently, it's people that I've met while I was on the convention trail. So, for example, I was heavily on the convention trail from probably 2005 to 2014. And during that time, I met so many tremendous artists, including you know, great friends, Eric Basaluda, Don McTague, Mike Crome, Sabine Rich, Nii Rafino, you know, people like that, uh, Sora Sung. And then also just through uh, Joel Gomez, you know, a lot of our contributors I just met in person. And, you know, when you get a, a good feeling about a person, you say, hey, do you want to work together? Now, by the same token, many of you know, I just love comics, right? So I seek out like a, like a collector myself and say, wouldn't it be great if Simon Bisley would do a cover? And then I just might do, you know, if I could get in communication with that person, I just might stone cold straight up ask and i usually say look i just love your stuff i you know and this is specifically what i love about your stuff i think it would be amazing if you could do a late death cover or you know lamarita and i ask him so that's kind of how it goes and uh you know my batting average is fairly high but you know sometimes you know people aren't interested <laughs> eric hart would like to know would you ever consider putting out an art book dedicated to stephen Hume? i think that's it's a challenging topic and uh it's it's one that i'm happy to talk to you about the next time we see each other in person. Okay, here's one. Uh, okay, so Nuku wants another. Does that mean Lady Slave and Boba Death both are <laughs> somewhere out there in the Star Wars style of the universe? Yeah, it's funny. You know, I've said this before, and you could consider every Coffin Comics cover as a gateway into another universe. So I'd have to say it's possible. Maybe time for one final cover and then got to go sign, sign, sign. Okay, yeah, old man Bones here. Will you ever do another Lady Death movie? You know, old man Bones, I would love to do a Lady Death movie. And I wish it was as simple as me saying, let's do it. But this involves like tens of millions of dollars and it's going to have to be when we team up with some people who, A, love the character, kind of get her for what she is, and really have the money, the skill, the wherewithal to really bring it to life. Sort of like we're doing with Art of Play with the game. These guys are the right partner to do this. This is a very ambitious project. It is an inordinately expensive project. But uh, I, I do think it's possible in our lifetime, but it really is going to be – it's going to have to involve – other folks who really know what they're doing and really get what it is that we do. Well, folks, I want to thank you so much for attending Beer with Brian, the March edition here in the Coffin Comics Lounge. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you sooner rather than later. We have some really fun upcoming events that you're actually invited to. We're doing the Keith Garvey Artist Celebration in April. 
We're bringing Keith Garvey out here from Niagara Falls, unveiling a beautiful series of covers, and it's a live event here at HQ. Not long thereafter, Coffin Comics will be in full effect at Phoenix Fan Fusion uh, Memorial Day weekend, where we have uh, amazing exclusives by many of the attending guests, and Monty Moore himself will be doing an instant edition. Then, in June, we will be announcing, before then, an in-person event that I cordially invite everybody to come to. More on that later, but in the meantime, thank you so much for listening. Talk to you soon, everybody.